Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This is episode number two. I'm gonna assemble the frame and paint it, so stay tuned, all right? You know, I was looking through my screws and I don't have a lot of three millimeter screws, so you guys are gonna take the ride with me. I'm probably gonna kinda screw it together here and there and I think I'm gonna weld the frame together. We won't have any movement doing it that way. And I think the thing to do is just kinda hold it together here and there with some screws and then I'm gonna weld it. Why not? Then I can remove the screws and, and move them to a different location and so on and so forth. I think if I put one screw right in the right smack dab in the middle here for this one, it's kind of a pain in the butt screwing it together anyway. But you would have to do this with an A net plastic kit anyway, an acrylic kit, so I think I used needle nose pliers to hold the nuts in the last time. Let's try that. This frame is actually designed to use three millimeter lock nuts. You know the nylocks with the nylon insert in them. And I don't have any of those either. Try to hold it together with the few three millimeter screws I have. And then we're gonna weld it. Goes in through this slot like this. I got plenty of three millimeter nuts. Just not enough three millimeter screws. I have some three millimeter screws, uh, socket head cap screws, but they're too long and I really don't feel like cutting a bunch of screws. It's a little cold here so I apologize for the uh, fan noise, but I got my uh, my wood stove going here and I got some fans to blow the heat around. It's warming up in here pretty quick though. It's been cold these past few days here in Tennessee. We got a little bit of snow and that nut just fell out. Yeah, so I hope the fan noise isn't too loud in the video. So I got four orders for this frame so far. Well, four interested parties, I should say, not orders, because I really haven't come up with a price yet. But um, the whole idea here is to kind of keep the price compatible with, uh, with a Prusa i3 uh, steel frame kit. I think I can do that and make it worth my while to cut these frames out. And they're going to be just the raw steel like you see here, not painted. You guys will have to paint them and finish them, whichever color you like. I'm not sure what color I'm going to go with, but I'm kind of leaning towards flat black or satin black. Man, this nut is driving me crazy. Let's try flipping this thing over. Maybe I can get a better view of it. Oh, this one didn't even hold. This frame is a little dirty with oil. Because um, I oiled them up. I didn't want them to rust on me because I I kind of, like I said, I did this with, uh, with used steel, with old steel, I should say, that had rust on it. And I ground it, and I didn't want it to re-rust again. So I uh, sprayed it with a little WD-40. But uh, the ones I'm going to sell are not going to be like that. They'll be done with brand new steel ideally what I'd like to do is uh, get enough orders to cut a whole sheet out a full 1 8 inch sheet 4 by 8 sheet and I'm not sure how many printer frames that is it's probably going to be in the neighborhood of 8 or so 8 frames and I really got to kind of get this this whole thing assembled 
because it's my first time putting this frame together so I'm not exactly sure what needs to go first so before I weld anything kind of need to get it get it right and square it up I actually got this on backwards I don't know if you guys can see that but this small D shape needs to go on this side if the frame is standing right side up so we're going to take this off flip it around Tiny little things. There we go. Now this here is the front frame. And it goes like this. And I'm pretty sure this thing can be completely assembled before you actually start putting parts on it. In other words, you don't have to leave parts off in order to assemble the rods and I believe this thing can be completely completely assembled. Well, we're going to find out. <clears throat> All I'm doing here is just putting some screws in here to kind of hold it together so I can weld it. That goes on like this. Now these motor plates. Ah, there you go. There's, they only go in one way. I know you can't see that, but let me turn this around. This motor plate only goes in one way. See, it won't go in that way. Turn it the other way, and there it goes. Fits right in there. And then this also only goes in one way. So this basically goes, I wanna make sure you guys can see what's going on here. This goes in there like that. This goes in there like that goes in like that and this goes in like that that's a beautiful thing these go up here like that another one on this side and there you go there you have it really not that many parts this is the sliding carriage not sure which way if it goes this way or this way or this way we'll figure that out oh no it actually goes this way this goes back and forth that's the sliding carriage and then we have the belt tensioner which goes in here there's a little 3d printed part for this That goes in there. And let's see. This here is the motor mount. This goes here. This is for the end stop. The Y end stop goes on there. On this motor mount. Oh, this motor mount goes right here. And that's pretty much how it goes together, guys. Easy as pie. It's easier to weld this thing than it is to screw it together, I'll tell you that much. Oh, 
walls we're doing is we're plug walling these. Wall that I right next to where the where the tabs actually go through the slots. That's where we're walling. So here goes the frame, all walled it up, sanded. I just uh, wiped it down with some degreaser. Ready to be primed. Look at that thing, man. Huh? You can move that anywhere. Throw that in the trunk of your car, you ain't gotta worry about nothing. Beautiful. First we're gonna prime it. Got a, little, a lot of little crevices here to get into kind of cool in here tonight, so I don't think, uh, I don't think this is going to be ready to paint tonight. Put a coat of primer on here anyway. I ended up welding this frame together instead of screwing it together. And I did that mainly because I didn't have the screws, but also, I mean, it's just stronger welded. Now, I didn't go nuts doing continuous seam welding. I pretty much welded it where it gets fastened, where it would normally get fastened with the screws. And I just plug welded where the, um, where the tabs go into the slots. To minimize distortion, you know? And I'm painting it satin black. Because black goes with everything. That's what she looks like. All right, primer's dry. I'm just going to scuff this real quick. I mean, pretty, pretty good. Probably gonna take a couple of coats, I would imagine. All right, guys, I'll uh, I'll get back to you once I get it painted. I'm cheating a bit. <laughs> I got it. I got it sitting on my wood stove to dry between coats here. It's kind of cool in here, and it takes a long time for the uh, the paint to dry. So this is going to be this is going to be very similar to a baked on finish because it's pretty darn hot on this stove. Look at this. I'm not sure if you guys can see that temperature. 520 degrees right there. A little bit cooler here on the surface of this. 289 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna let this dry in here and throw the second coat on. I got a little bit of sanding to do. I had a run right here, I wiped it off. But it's warming up in here now. So the second coat should go on a lot better. 
So here's the final bit of the frame, all painted, second coat of paint. Got a few parts over here. if you can see that with the lighting in here but that's the carriage that moves back and forth and there's the frame all painted up I think it came out pretty good not perfect but it looks damn good in my opinion it's gonna be sweet Stay tuned for part three, where we're gonna take all these parts on this and install them on the metal frame. Uh, I'm, lo I'm really looking forward to that, so keep an eye out for that video. If you haven't seen video number one, I'm gonna put a, a card up here and a link in the description below for uh, video number one in this series, where I cut it out on the plasma cutter. This is gonna be a great frame for ANET A6 owners because it's an easy upgrade. You're gonna be able to take the stock configuration parts, including this horizontal axis, and put it right onto the frame, onto that steel frame. It's designed specifically for the a and A6. You don't have to go to a Prusa i3 frame where you gotta change the configuration of the x-axis. This is the way to go, man, if you have an a and A6. Please like, subscribe, share it with your friends. I think this is going to be a great frame for ANET A6 owners. Thanks for watching.